So today I finally have some good news and it's that the software engineering interview has finally changed. Now the question kind of turns into, is it for the better or is it for the worst? For context, for the last like couple decades, the only way that most people, the industry standard of people interviewing for software engineering jobs is to study algorithms and data structures and everything that's in this book. They would memorize and try to understand how to do these short one hour, two hour long problems so that people can judge how well you think and you work and how well you know these sort of problems. And that's a problem because like you're basically studying just for the interview and people will just like jam on leak code for hours and days and try to get these high scores and understand all these algorithms, but then not really know what to do in the real job. Now this process wasn't really that bad because at least if you were to memorize these algorithms and these data structures, you at least have a foundation of like how you understand software. And the idea is that when you're on the job or you're doing a proper software engineering job, you can learn the business and you can learn how to do things off of those foundational skills. It's not great, but it also like was the industry standard, standard for a reason. It wasn't too bad and you would learn a little bit about the, the candidate. So this week I read a newsletter from the Pragmatic Engineer. I see you, head gay. I really hope I said that right. And he got to interview the head of engineering at Shopify and they have completely changed how they interview their engineers and they do this all remotely. And the biggest change that they do is that they actually allow their applicants and actually kind of encourage them to use AI during the interview. And the goal is just to see how they work and how they think and how they try to kind of process the problem, the, the, the coding prompt that they're given and see how they would work like at the job that they're trying to apply for. And I feel like this is kind of, this is great in a way because it actually pushes us more towards the area of like, what would it look like if you were to work here? So you get a better taste of like, what kind of work you might do and also how you would approach it. So if you're getting hung up on some certain things, then you would know that as someone who's interviewing you. And the cool thing is the head of uh, the head of engineering actually jumps in on a lot of interviews and is watching them and seeing how well they actually use AI and how much they depend on it. If you're using AI for 100% of the the work, then that's a problem, right? But he wants to see like where you stop with the prompt and then you change the code yourself and how you refactor and change things to make them better and cleaner code. So yeah, it's always good to see if a candidate is able to notice when the AI is starting to get a little sloppy. And here's the other thing. He said that you do not need to use AI in your interview, but he did also say that like you're gonna get clobbered by someone who is using AI. So you might as well be using the tools that we have today to make yourself a better engineer, to make you faster and more efficient. So again, this is only Shopify. This is only one place. Like, will the rest of the industry start interviewing people this way? That's hard to tell. Not every company is as willing to adopt AI into their flows. And also interviewing has always been kind of broken. So I don't imagine that just, just because AI is around that things are gonna change for the better. There's a step in the right direction in regards to like understanding how a candidate is gonna be working on your team how they think, what kind of stuff that they're able to like acknowledge and think about big picture and ship good code. Now, there are some things that I'm kind of worried about in our industry and I've had, I've seen other videos online talk about like the, the junior engineering crisis and that is definitely still a problem we have to overcome because when it comes to AI and you're using these tools to like build up code super fast, it's a superpower. You can like cruise through and build up apps within hours because you know what to look out for. You've been coding for years, for example, and you would know when things are getting a little sloppy or like an edge case might be reached. Now, that information, that kind of like in intuition comes from being burned for years and years and years of coding that, uh, that teaches you the lessons of like what is good code and what is bad code. Now the problem is, it's like if you're just learning to code and you're trying to do production code straight out of school, then how do you get that experience? If you have AI just like churning out things that are good already, how do you know when it's going the wrong way? And that's the problem that we're all gonna have to deal with because just because AI can do a lot of things that junior engineers can, how do senior engineers come into play? They become senior engineers after being junior engineers. Like we need to start training like the next generation of coders. And that's the interesting question of like, how are we going to make sure that we're raising the next generation in a way that's gonna produce code that lasts 
more than just a couple years, like 10, 15 years and be maintained and work in production atmospheres. So if you like this video and this topic, just go ahead and bring it up in the comments and I respond to everyone's comment and I like to have discussions around this and I wonder what the next like 10 years is gonna look like with engineering. So I'll see you in the comments or I'll see you in the next video, but until then, have a good one guys, enjoy.